So in the second, second part, we're going to be looking at the contraindications of the shoulder area, uh, the points where things go horribly wrong. Um, and then we're going to look at some each one postures and uh, how the shoulder blades move in Pang Lu Ji and An in Tai Chi. Yeah. So the four areas where uh, you want to be aware of in your body are first of all the top of the shoulder. Yeah. Um, what usually happens in normal movement when we raise our hand, teacher, teacher, I have a question, we crunch up here yeah this area closes that's a no-no what we want to do is keep that area open yeah like so yeah if that area crunches you lose the shoulder connection the shoulder is technically is basically closed right and you're just if you're holding something it's holding a weight up above your head for instance all of that pressure goes straight into the shoulder right but if it's open, that pressure is going to come down your arm, connect to the rest of the body. Yeah. So there is an uh, energetic center also there. Um, if you if you feel the collarbone, and then you just kind of follow it to the end. Uh, there's a soft area there. Somewhere there is a is an energetic center. So if you bring the shoulder up too high, it's going to crunch that also. It's going to stop some of that energy flow. Yeah. So whatever uh, you've got, whatever uh, Qigong practice you've got, you want to have a look at that where you might be raising your arms up or maybe you've got your Bagua practice when the arm comes up like so. Yeah. You want to just check that, play with that and check that. Make sure it's open, not crunched. Yeah. So that's number one. Number two is the front of the shoulder, uh, the top of the chest or the shoulder's nest here, right? So what happens is when the arms come forward, yeah, maybe at a punch, uh, this area, after some time, after some range it's going to sooner or later tense up yeah so you can try that yeah sooner or later depending how far you go it it might get a little tense yeah and that's that's also this a no-no you want that area to be soft yeah so try to push your arm forward if you don't feel it there then maybe bring it a little more to the center a little bit more to the other side and you should definitely start to feel some tension there yeah and then just when you do feel that just try to release it maybe massage it a little maybe tap it a little just try to release it still holding the fist in the same place yeah and what that does is it really helps you get the roundedness of the shoulder and the hollowness of the chest which is one of the movement principles we've got uh, structural principles we've got in these arts as you probably know if you're watching this so when we're also in the hugging tree posture if we spread too much spread the shoulder blades too much we might start to get a little crunching up here release that we might start to get a little bit of tension in here release that yeah. similar to up here, if this is tense, then you're blocking the energy flow a little. You're losing the structural integrity a little bit. So that's point two. Yeah, these are very important ones, these ones. Yeah. So the third one that we want to look at is not so much, um, well, yeah, it's, it's the center of the shoulder blade is where the energy center is and it's we're going to move things sideways yeah that's no problem usually yeah 
we move them sideways, sideways as much as we can. Uh, in the beginning, it might not move so much. Later on, there's hopefully lots and lots of mobility. But what we want to concern ourselves with is how much do they move back? Yeah, because it's not like yoga where we happily, easily move the shoulder blades back and stick the chest out. Yeah. So what, we, what you want to try to do is maybe in this posture spread your shoulder blades out as much as you can. Yeah. And then move the shoulder blades back in and see the point where it starts to stick your chest out. Yeah. When you come to that point you've come a little bit too far. Yeah. So coming back, spread the shoulder blades and then come back in again, bring the shoulder blades in. And where it starts to stick the chest out, that's too far. Yeah. A more subtle version is if you're really in your body, in your Wuji stance, sort of structural alignment, hips dropped, everything, all the joints nicely stacked, spine straight, all of that. Chin slightly tucked in, so you've got a nice sense of your spine. So a more subtle version of that is, if you bring the shoulder blades in a little, there's going to be a point somewhere before the chest sticks out, where you start to feel pressure in your spine from the shoulder blades. Yeah. And it, it's, it's a lot more subtle, but it's already a sign that your spine is getting a bit, bit of pressure this way, if that's my front. It's getting a little bit of pressure this way, and you have to be aware that it's not moving your spine forward. Yeah. So A, if you are a beginner, make, just make sure you're not sticking your chest out when the shoulder blades come in. And B, if you have a bit more sensitivity in your body, just try to feel where it's pressurizing the back of your spine, back of your neck even. Yeah. And the, the, those two points are your sort of uh, warning signs. Hey, you've gone a little bit too far when you bring the shoulder blades back in. So that's number three. Number four is the armpit. Yeah. So the fourth point, that's, there's also an energy center in there in the armpit. So all of these have energy centers. Yeah. Um, and the armpit is important because it's it kind of is in the middle point in the in the it's like the center of the pulley uh, between your arm and your torso. Yeah. So your your arm connects to your torso through the armpit, through the shoulder, through the armpit. Yeah. So the the armpit, if it's not open the connection gets lost. If it's open, the elbow is pulled out a bit more and you get more of a pulley that eventually, if not already, connects, connects to your belly. So you get a nice belly massage yeah, just by moving your elbow. Yeah. Or you're moving your hand from your belly. Yeah. But if the armpit is if, it, if it's not open properly, it's the connection's not quite the same. Yeah. So you have to have the armpit open. Even in Wuji, I talk about having, a, uh, having them open, uh, maybe enough to put a small ball in there. Yeah. But uh, where, where it's easy for them to collapse is when we bring the hands, the elbows a little closer to the body like so. Yeah, so that's where it's easy to collapse. You might get a little tension at the shoulder's nest there, and you might close the armpit there, but you want those two points to release. Yeah, this one, shoulder's nest release, and armpit open. And yeah, they're all connected. 
Yeah. So you can try that in your different practices that you know or do and see if you can apply those um, into the movements that you know, the four different points. So just to recap, top of the shoulder, don't crunch it. Front of the shoulder, keep it soft. Back of the shoulder, um, don't bring it in too much. And the armpit, keep it open. Yeah. So I know that's plenty already, but we'll move on. Yeah. So again, I encourage you to just take that little bit and play with it. Yeah. But when we look at the different postures, just we can we've now kind of covered which way the shoulders can move and where we get tense. Um, so when we look at say the first four each one health postures, which are here here, here, and here. Yeah. Um, so join me. Let's go into the first one. And here, just feeling the shoulder blades are spread. Yeah. Trying to spread this also and not tense here. All good. This should be pretty easy. But here, when we move on to the next one, when the hands come to here, um, slowly, slowly, keeping an eye on this area, making sure that the shoulder's nest doesn't get tense, or if it does, try to release it a little, and making sure that the armpits still stay open. Yeah. So if it is tense, then just bring the hands back a little, yeah. Or if you if the armpits collapse, then let the hands be a little bit more to the side. Yeah. The main thing is that the arms are parallel to the ground. So if you've got shoulder tension, these are the areas that are good to focus on, these four points, to release that shoulder tension whilst in a standing posture. The next one is going to be the tree hugging pose or the moon embracing pose. That should be fairly easy for you also, coming into here. You might feel that the pressure changes a little, so you might feel a bit more pressure in the neck area. But still, should be fairly easy to spread your shoulder blades here to keep the shoulder's nest soft here. And again, if it's not, to just adjust, first of all, by trying to release that area. And if you really can't, then you just try to change the posture a little. Maybe bring the hands a little bit closer. Maybe sink the elbows a bit more. Yeah. And then finally, the fourth posture. Palms turn to face up. Come to about head height, crown height, third eye height, something like that. And here, making sure we don't crunch up, yeah, none of this, but this stays open. And the shoulder blades really tuck under to make it easier, so you're not just holding your arm up, which will make your shoulder tired. You just support it by rolling the shoulder blade down. Yeah. Holding this here. Knowing which way the shoulder blades move and engaging them in those directions should also just increase the stretch overall and it might actually make it harder to begin with because you feel like there's more engagement in your posture.
And again, when you're holding these, like in all standing post practices, just release whenever you feel tension to the best of your ability. Okay, so there's another little set for you to play with, the four contraindications and the four, um, the four postures, health postures in each one, four out of eight. Uh, I think I covered the, the full set in another video, in the previous video, so have a look at that if you don't know the health postures already. So, the final posture that we'll look at is your good old Santi, or your Trinity posture. Bow and arrow stance, you can either be 50-50, or you can bring it to 60%, 70% to your back leg, depending where you are with your body. Different styles of Xing Yi uh, do it differently, but have it at least 50-50. Uh, I like to be about 60-40. Yeah. One hand in front of the lower belly, one hand in front of the chest, along your center line, looking out to the front like so. Yeah. And there's, there's uh, all these connections that we talk about in Santi, how the hands connect to each other, how the hands connect to the torso, uh, to the feet, how the feet connect to each other. Um, how the hands connect to the back, etc., etc., the up and down, uh, elastic bands, if you like to call them. But as we're mainly concerned uh, about the shoulder blades, today we're mainly going to look at the shoulders and the hands. Yeah. So let's try to get a sense first of all that the shoulder blades are spreading. Yeah. So we're getting this, this nice roundedness of the shoulders, the hollowness of the chest. Yeah, so that kind of should feel like your elbows are going out. Yeah. And actually, even before that, if you just drop the hands a little, even before that, as you raise your hands up, the shoulder blades are coming down. Yeah. So now they're kind of tucked, tucked down and then you spread them out so the elbows um, become a bit more taut. Everything here becomes a bit more taut, yeah, a bit more connected. And then finally, you want to feel like you're hands are pushing forward away from your body, the elastic bands between the torso and the hands. So hands are pushing away from the body and the shoulder blades are pushing backward. Yeah? So in other words, try to push your hands forward by pushing your shoulder blades back. Yeah? You might not even see much of a physical movement there, but it's, it's a sense, it's a feeling. Now, as your shoulder blades are tucked under, spread to the side and pushing back at the same time, the bottom hand shoulder blade is also going to have a sense of pulling in a little, even though it might not actually physically be moving in a bit, but it just has this sense of pulling in a little as you get a sense of the top hand moving forward and the back hand moving back away from each other. Even though the back hand is still moving forward away from the torso, in relation to each other, they're kind of pulling away like this. Yeah? So in, the in terms of the shoulder blade, there's a slight sense of it coming back also. Just for the bottom hand. Yeah. 
So if you release, and if you come up, let's try it again. Let's, let's go shoulder blades tuck under, shoulder blades spread, get the elbows into position, hands move forward, shoulder blades back, and then bottom shoulder blade, bottom hand shoulder blade comes in a little as well. So it's like it's going to all directions pretty much at the same time. Yeah. And hold that for another hour if you like, pause the video, and uh, we'll do the other side when you're ready. I'm ready now. So, shoulder blades down, coming into the posture, spread the shoulder blades a bit, so you can send the elbows out, send, send the hands out away from the torso a bit by pushing the shoulder blades backward. And then the bottom hand, if you have it in your practice, also have a slight feeling of it coming in. So you get the opposite connection of the hands. If you've kind of lost it, you feel free to just explore it again. By starting again, just keeping it nice and gentle. And if you feel like you've got it, you can just hold it for a while. Settle in into the posture and see how it feels. And the contraindications are the same. Try not to tense the top, the front, the back, or underneath the shoulder as you're doing these postures. Right. So I hope you found that fun. And uh, again, practice that. Stand alone if you like, if you have a Santi practice. Um, we're going to move on to the last bit of this, which is Pang Lu Jianan. Uh, Pang in Tai Chi, uh, if you're familiar with it, just uh, that's good. But just a quick recap for those who aren't so familiar. Uh, they are different forces. Um, in fact, they're the four primary so-called forces in Tai Chi. Uh, Pang being your ward off, Lu is your rollback. G is your press and on is your push. Yeah. Others include shoulder strike, elbow strike, uh, pluck, uh, so on and so forth, different directions, central equilibrium, um, which all account to the 13 forces in Tai Chi, but Pang Lu Ji and An are the main, main four and uh, in those, the movement of the shoulder blades is very clear. And then you can take that and then apply it to other parts of the Tai Chi, whatever Tai Chi it is that you do. Yeah. So Pang, in, in Ward Off, say we're doing left Pang here, um, the shoulder blade spreads out. Yeah? That's what creates the structure. Yeah? When we come to right ward off, it's mainly the right shoulder that spreads out, but it's also spread out in the left one for sure. Yeah. Especially in the right one, because your bottom hand is a little higher, it's, it's a lot clearer that that side shoulder blade also spreads as opposed to here. Yeah. But in Pong in general, 
it's about the shoulder blades spreading out. Yeah? So try that. Palm. Palm. Left ward off. Right ward off. Left ward off. Having that. Engagement on the X axis, right ward off. Throughout. Yeah. Easy peasy. And then coming into Lu or roll back from here. Yeah. And here the shoulder blade comes in a little. Yeah. But similar to the Santi and to how I showed in the when I was talking about the contraindications, it's not so much that the shoulder blade really comes in and your chest starts to stick out and your armpit collapse. No, no. So you want to still just get a sense of things, the shoulder blade coming in a little, but not really. It's still spread out because you might have heard this before, pung is in everything. Yeah? Your, your pung is the main force and it's in everything. This rollback has to have pung. In other words, if you look at it from the uh, shoulder mobility point of view, which is what we're doing today, it's still the shoulders still need to be spread. But you, when you're doing Lu, it's a sense that you're bringing that shoulder in a little. Yeah. Uh, the opponent's force bringing it in a little, but not losing the palm. Yeah. So try that. You can try on the other side also. Lou, roll back. Roll back. Roll back. Roll back. Yeah. So palm, shoulder blades out. Lou, shoulder blades in, ever so slightly. And then G, your press is easy peasy. Yeah. Shoulder blades go down because uh, back because you're pushing forward. So this is just like those exercises there uh, that we did earlier. Yeah, all this pushing stuff against the wall or just this. So G is the same. You should feel this in your shoulders moving back. Yeah, and you can try it. Try the difference between the two if you don't do it with the shoulders engaged, and when you do it with with the shoulders engaged. So if I if I come pum lu g and I'm just kind of pushing with my arms, it should feel different to when I'm pushing the shoulder blades away at the same time. Yeah. See if you can find that. But you know it's still Tai Chi, all of this, you shouldn't be really like ah, pushing the shoulder blades, yeah, yeah, no, you still, this is still about just kind of getting them to engage in a nice soft smooth matter, sooner or later, if it's not strong now, it's going to become nice and strong, let it be a natural thing, yeah. So we've got Pong, Lu, G, and then on when the shoulder blades first move up, and then the shoulder blades move down. So on, we've got this action going. On usually is a push down, and when that happens, for instance, like um, play guitar, yeah, there's an on there, um, the shoulder blades are going up, yeah. It's the counter lever, in other words. Uh, when we do Pong Lu Ji and An here, the hands come down first and then they push up. Yeah. Or forward a little. And that's 
that's when um, the shoulder blade comes up and then down. Yeah. So after G, when the shoulder blades go back, shoulder blades come up and then down. Yeah. Try that. Palm, the G, and arms. You can even just rock between arm back and forth. You can take any of these palm do G and arms and just kind of feel the shoulder blades moving. Yeah. And when you've got it in the four primary forces, you can do it this way. You can do it mirror image because Tai Chi Tai Chi is more uh, asymmetrical than Qi Gong. So if you're just practicing with different components, feel free to mirror, turn it into the mirror image and play with it on the other side also. But what you can also do once you've kind of uh, become comfortable with the shoulder blade movement in Pang Lu Jian An is to try to find them in other parts of the form. Yeah. How does your shoulder, how do the shoulder blades move in other parts of the form? Um, where am I getting tense in my shoulder in other parts of the form? That's what the form is good for, just exploring. You've got a huge container, even if it's a short form, um, it's, there's going to be plenty of stuff to look at there. And um, yeah, that's about it. Uh, not so much of a, a practice, uh, but lots of little things there for you to take and practice. Yeah, so I hope you enjoyed that and I uh, hope to see you next time.